All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at some much faster alternatives for creating realistic depth of field type effects in our final renders. All right, so here's the render we're going to be working with for this particular lesson. So you can see we have the light set up, we have the shadow set up, and everything looks relatively decent. But the one thing that we are missing is any kind of a localized depth of field effect. All right, so the human eye, and even to a certain extent cameras, if you focus on one particular area, the other areas that fall outside of that become blurred. All right, so it becomes that uh, apparent with areas of focus and also areas of further away distance. So in reality, if we were to be focusing on this portion of the knife, let's say this uh, magnifying glass, because these back areas and these back blades are further away, they should be out of focus. And it's the lack of these sorts of effects that give any sort of an image away as being a computer-generated image. Now, Maya and most other applications do have the capability to create depth of field effects right here within our final render. The problem becomes, though, that to add these depth of field effects become very, very expensive. And what I mean by expensive is that your renders take a much, much longer time if you try to include any sort of depth of field effects here within your final render. All right, so how can we get these depth of field effects without actually having to take the time to render the depth of field? We do that through the use of our depth pass which we had a chance to take a look at a little bit earlier when we were setting up these render layers. So with the depth pass, what we get is this. Just this simple black and white depth information where the white areas represent the areas of our scene that are closest to the camera, and these black areas, as we get further and further away, represent the areas further away from our camera. All right, and you can see to render this pass only takes a few seconds. But what we get with this is that most third-party applications, most uh, uh, visual effects applications and uh, things like Photoshop, are able to utilize this black and white information to create depth of field effects. All right, so in this particular lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can create this effect using Photoshop. All right, although most uh, visual effects software will let you do the same thing, although the methods may be slightly different. All right, so if you're working in Photoshop, here's our final render where we have our occlusion pass comped in. We have our reflection pass comped in. A little bit of minor color correction that's happening, all stacked on top of our color layer. All right, so as the final step, we want to be able to add some sort of a depth of field effect to this. So in order to make sure that it gets applied, this uh, depth of field effect gets applied to all the passes, we want the uh, reflections to be blurred, we want the shadows to be blurred, we want to go ahead and merge all of these together into one layer. So in Photoshop, the shortcut for that is Control Shift E on your keyboard. So Control Shift E, that'll merge all these layers into one layer that now I can apply this effect to. So let's open up the depth pass for this. So let's go to depth pass. We'll go to the Swiss Army knife up close. All right. So, as I mentioned, in Photoshop, this is going to be a little bit different than what you might encounter in some other applications, the process of actually making this blur. But in Photoshop, here's how we do this. We select this depth pass, Control A to select everything, and then Control C to copy this information, or to copy this entire layer. Now, back in our uh, collapsed color pass, let's go to the Channels tab, and you might already have an alpha layer in here. If you don't, let's say if you don't, if you just see uh, red, green, and blue, let's just click on the new layer tab. That'll make a new alpha. It could be alpha 1, it could be alpha 3, it could be named pretty much anything. All right, you can have pretty much an unlimited number of alpha channels within your image. So with this, let's control V to paste that depth information back into the alpha channel. And once we apply this blur effect, this alpha channel is the first place it's going to look. So we can use this depth information. Okay, so let's go back to this background layer that we've now collapsed that has this alpha channel information in it. 
So with this, let's go to Filter, let's go down to Blur, and in Photoshop, the command for this is called a Lens Blur. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure we're zoomed in on this 100%. So we can have the option to bring this source from a few different areas. We have a transparency, a layer mask, or in most chances, it, one of the alpha channels. All right, so that's why we pasted this depth information. And what you should see is a result of uh, some areas being a little bit more blurred than others. So what we can do is adjust the areas that are blurred by increasing or decreasing the focal distance. So you can see as we start to increase this focal distance, what we should see are these areas closer become in focus. As we start to adjust this a little bit more, you can begin to see how that area of focus now begins to shift downward. All right? Now if you don't necessarily like adjusting this slider, a much easier way to adjust the focus is to simply move your cursor here into this preview area and then simply click on the area that you want to become focused. So if I were to click back on these back blades, the focal distance will automatically adjust to bring these into focus. And again, this is using that black and white information on that depth pass. All right, so this is very, very useful. The fact that we have full control over the radius or the amount of blur that happens, so we could have a very subtle amount of blur, or if we were to increase this, a much higher level of blur. Now, as this blur starts to get a little bit higher, this radius level, you will start to notice a little bit of an anomaly. If I zoom in on this, we can bring this a little bit more into focus. And that is, we get some of these unnatural edges around this area. So normally, if this were going to be out of focus, this would be very blurry, and we wouldn't have this sharp edge. All right, same with this corkscrew area. You see, we have just kind of an unnatural blur that happens here. Now, if I cancel out of this, we can explore why this is happening. If we go back to this channels, in our situation it's because we have a very subtle or a very sudden change in this black and white information and that's why we get that sort of unusual sharp edge along that blur filter. So what we can do is take this alpha channel and actually just blur this out a little bit more. So with this alpha layer selected let's go to filter, blur, and let's in our situation use a Gaussian blur which will give it an even blurring all throughout. Depending on the size of your image, well, maybe two or three pixels should do it, just enough to soften out this edge. All right, so we'll hit OK. All right, so now these edges have been softened out a little bit, and this should overall give us a little bit more of a blurry, natural lens blur. So go back to this background layer. Let's reapply this lens blur. Zoom into this a little bit more. And what you should start to see now that we've blurred that edge is we wind up with a much more natural blur. All right, we don't have that unusual hard edge anymore. So again, we can begin to focus on certain areas by just clicking on those. All right, so you can see how this happens almost in real time. This is much, much faster than if we had tried to apply this exact same type of effect using just uh, Maya, or the strict uh, 3D depth of field. Right? And you can see by how adding this very simple little effect that only takes a few seconds extra to render out adds a much greater level of realism to our scene because now we actually have these realistic areas of focus that we would expect to see in real life. And again, this is just one more testament to the strength of render layers, the fact that we can do this type of an effect in literally a fraction of the time than what we would have normally been able to do it back in Mental Ray. All right, so that's a look at the lens blur and adding depth of field effects to our final renders.